Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. What's going on everybody and welcome, oh I'm looking at myself. What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Today, we're going to learn all about the Madrean Sky Islands, a unique subset of ecosystems in Arizona, New Mexico, Sonora, and Chihuahua. Did you know that the Madrean Sky Islands are the most biodiverse area in the United States of their size? They also have jaguars. That's incredible. We're going to learn all about what the Madrean Sky Islands are, what makes them so special, their plants, their animals, and of course, their geology. In my recent trip to southeastern Arizona, I took all of the photographs in this video unless otherwise cited, so I hope you like the pictures. Without further ado, let's get this video started! What is a sky island? Simply put, sky islands are isolated mountains surrounded by radically different lowland environments. There are several examples of sky islands from around the world, including the Madrean Sky Islands, or the Madrean Archipelago, the Great Basin Archipelago, the East African Archipelago, and the Altai Tian Shan Archipelago. Why are the Madrean Sky Islands so special? The Madrean Sky Islands are so special in large part due to their immense biodiversity. The biodiversity, or variety, of different types of organisms that live in the Madrean Sky Islands is so high due mainly to the high vertical relief that these Sky Island mountain ranges have, as well as their geographic proximity to several different unique ecosystems. If we take a look at this map right here, we can see that the Madrean Sky Islands are effectively a huge transition zone between six different ecosystems. The Rocky Mountains to the north, the Great Plains and Chihuahuan Desert to the east, the Sierra Madre Occidental and Neotropics to the south, and the Sonoran Desert to the west. And if we take a look at this diagram here, we can see that as one increases in elevation, the vegetation vastly differs, from desert scrub at the bottom of these mountain ranges to pine and fir forests at the top of them. It's akin to driving north for hundreds of miles. If you drive up Mount Lemmon from Tucson, it's basically like driving from Mexico to Canada, but in an hour and doing so vertically instead of by latitude. And here's an example of this. This is a picture that I took at the bottom of Mount Lemmon. We see these are all saguaro cactus at Sonoran Desert. Now, towards the top of Mount Lemmon, we can see that this is a mixed pine fir forest dominated by pine trees. It's really cool. Now, one of the main reasons why plant life differs as you increase in elevation, especially here in the Madrean Sky Islands, is because these mountains are good at catching storms. They're good at catching moisture. So it's much more moist. You get much more precipitation towards the top of these mountain ranges than you do at the bottom, which allows for forest to grow rather than desert to dominate. And in each ecosystem, as you go up these mountains, there are several different unique plant and animal species that grow in each of these tiered ecosystems, which we're going to talk about right now. Flora and fauna of the Madrean Archipelago. Now, I'm not going to talk about every single plant and animal species that lives in the Madrean Archipelago, because that would take hours, but what I am going to do is I'm going to touch on some of the more major ones in different life zones within the Madrean Archipelago, specifically plants and animals that you can see when you go and take your own adventure out here. Another unique thing about the Madrean Sky Islands is that not every mountain range has the same vegetation. And what I mean by that is more eastern mountain ranges are going to have more Chihuahuan Desert and Great Plains-like vegetation, especially at lower elevations, whereas the more western ranges are going to have more Sonoran Desert-like vegetation, especially at lower elevations. Additionally, more northern ranges are going to have more Rocky Mountain species, and more southern ranges are going to have more Sierra Madre species. So it's really just the perfect storm of biodiversity. Let's take a closer look at that, especially in regards to southeastern Arizona ranges. So if we take a look at this map here, which has the Arizona Madrean Sky Islands all named, we can see that the more western ranges, like the Santa Catalina Mountains, the Babokivari Mountains, the Sierrita Mountains, the Pajarito Mountains, and the Santa Rita Mountains, are more Sonoran Desert influenced in terms of their plant and animal life, whereas the more eastern ranges, like the Pinaleños, the Chiricahuas, the Peloncillos, and the Animas Mountains, 
are much more Chihuahuan desert influenced. So this has huge impacts for different plant and animal species. We can also see that the more southern ranges like the Huachucas and the Santa Ritas are probably more Sierra Madre influenced, while more northerly ranges like the Santa Catalinas and the Pinaleños are more Rocky Mountain influenced. And we can see this in the flora and fauna. The type of animal that is perhaps affected the most by this quote unquote perfect storm of biodiversity in the Madrean Sky Islands are birds. The Madrean Sky Islands are an ornithologist's paradise, with over 650 species of birds documented to live in southeastern Arizona. And the biodiversity in the avian kingdom here in the Madrean Sky Islands is so high because of their geographic proximity to those different unique ecosystems. So you have tropical birds such as the eared quetzal and the elegant trogon finding themselves up here intermingling with more temperate birds like the lesser goldfinch and the dark-eyed junco. It really is a perfect storm of biodiversity here in the Madrean Sky Islands, and it is a world-renowned place to go bird watching, especially Madera Canyon in the Santa Ritas, Patagonia Lake State Park, and Ramsey Canyon in the Huachucas. Although birds are of particular note in terms of biodiversity in the Madrean Sky Islands, Biodiversity extends to all species of plants and animals. So let's really dive into the flora and fauna here of the Madrean Sky Islands, starting with the desert scrub and ending with the fir forest. Desert scrub and desert grassland, 2,000 to 4,500 feet. At the lowest elevations of the Madrean Sky Islands, you'll find desert scrub and desert grassland. If you're in the west, it's going to be more Sonoran, and if you're in the east, it's going to be more Chihuahuan. If you're more on the Sonoran side, you're likely to see saguaro cactus, ocotillo, teddy bear choya, chain fruit choya, various species of prickly pear, mesquites, palo verdes, various species of barrel cactus, the gila woodpecker, the cactus wren, Arizona state bird, and the Harris hawk. If you're on the Chihuahuan side, you're likely to see palmer's agave, grass, various species of prickly pear, and the Chihuahuan raven. Some animal species that you can see in both the Sonoran and Chihuahuan desert scrublands and grasslands include the gambles quail, red-tailed hawk, various species of hummingbirds, phainopepla, burrowing owl, common raven, roadrunner, desert cottontail, coyote, and javelina, or collared peccary, as well as a litany of invertebrate, reptile, and amphibian species. Oak chaparral and pine oak woodland, 4,500 feet to 7,000 feet. The mid-elevation oak chaparral and pine oak woodland ecosystems of the Madrean Sky Islands are perhaps the most biodiverse, hosting a plethora of plant and animal species. Some common trees and shrubs that you might see here include the Arizona white oak, the emery oak, the Mexican blue oak, the silverleaf oak, the mountain yucca, the Arizona cypress, the alligator juniper, the manzanita, the Mexican pinon, the chihuahua pine, the apache pine, and the Arizona pine. As well as the Arizona sycamore, particularly around creeks and arroyos. There are also a treasure trove of animal species that you can see here in the oak chaparral and pine oak woodlands of the Madrean Sky Islands, including, but not limited to, the white-tailed deer, the mule deer, the white-nosed coati, the Arizona gray squirrel, the bobcat, the mountain lion, the raccoon, the ringtail, the black bear, the Mexican jay, the wild turkey, the acorn woodpecker, the Arizona woodpecker, the Montezuma quail, the elegant trogon, the eared quetzal, the elf owl, a litany of amphibian invertebrate and reptile species, as well as the jaguar and the ocelot. Wait, jaguars and ocelots live in Arizona? Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. As of today, January 11th, 2024, there are three jaguars documented to live in Arizona. One lives in the Santa Ritas, one lives in the Huachucas, and one lives in the Chiricahuas. These jaguars are named. This is El Jefe. He lives in the Santa Ritas, while Sombra here, meaning shadow in Spanish, lives in the Chiricahuas. As of three weeks ago, there were actually only two confirmed jaguars to live in Arizona and the United States. But incredibly, on December 20th, 2023, a man by the name of Jason Miller caught a new jaguar on his trail camera in the Huachuca Mountains. He named the jaguar Cochise. 
Now, the interesting thing is, is that biologists know that this is a new jaguar. It's not Sombra or El Jefe because of the unique patterns on the jaguar's fur. Jaguars have unique patterns akin to a human's unique fingerprint. So that is really amazing. Though there are three confirmed jaguars to live in southern Arizona today, it's important to note that Arizona does not have a breeding population of jaguars. All of these jaguars that live in Arizona are males that have left their breeding range in Mexico in search of mates, however futile it is. They do stay and claim their own territory though, but they'll probably go back to Mexico to mate if they haven't already. The same holds true for ocelots, with only one confirmed ocelot to still live in Arizona, in the Huachuca Mountains. Again, this ocelot was photographed by the same guy that caught the jaguar, Jason Miller, on his trail cams. So, ocelots and jaguars are at the extreme north end of their range in southern Arizona, and the breeding population is down in Mexico. So the ocelots and jaguars that we see in southern Arizona are leaving their breeding range in search of mates and territory. They have yet to reestablish a breeding population in the United States, but there is hope that the U.S. government might help and reestablish jaguar and ocelot population in southern Arizona. They used to live from southern California all the way through Louisiana. However, they have been hunted to extinction in the United States but they're coming back. Pine forest and fir forest, 7,000 to 10,000 feet. At the highest elevations in the Madrean Sky Islands, you actually find very lush pine forest and fir forest, which is outlined by a number of different conifer species and other tree species, including the Douglas fir, ponderosa pine, chihuahua pine, apache pine, arizona pine, arizona cypress, southwestern white pine, white fir, subalpine fir, Engelmann spruce, netleaf oak, and quaking aspen. The animal species that I discussed that lived in the oak chaparral and pine oak woodlands also live in these upper elevation pine and fir forests during the summer. You can also find golden eagles, great horned owls, and other birds of prey up in these high elevation areas. Now that we've discussed some of the flora and fauna of the Madrean Sky Islands, let's move on to the part that rocks, the geology. Although, you know, I think plants and animals rock too. Um, it was really just for the pun. <laughs> okay, on we go. Geology of the Madrean Sky Islands. Now, as we've just learned, the Madrean Sky Islands are very important and unique ecologically speaking. And I'm here to tell you that without the geology of the area, there would be no ecology. The geology factors into the ecology scintillatingly. Wow, that's a lot of ologies. So in short, the driver to all of the geologic processes that created the mountain ranges that would become the Madrean Sky Islands is basin and range crustal extension. So due to that basin and range crustal extension, we have several different types of mountain ranges with different lithologies or bedrock geologies in the Madrean Sky Islands, and I'm going to touch on a few of them. So we're going to start here with metamorphic core complexes. Several mountain ranges in southeastern Arizona are metamorphic core complexes, and I have discussed uh, the specifics of metamorphic core complexes in other videos, especially my Ruby Mountains geology video, so refer to that for more specifics things. Anyways, the Santa Catalina Mountains, which rise drastically and dramatically over the east end of Tucson, are an example of a metamorphic core complex. They were formed about 20 to 25 million years ago, and the main bedrock that exists in the Santa Catalina Mountains, the Santa Catalina Granite, which you see here, is about 28 million years old. So here we're going to see the Rincon Mountains and take a close look at their shape. They look very circular, as you can see right here, which is almost directly in line with the diagram seen here. If we take a look here at one of the canyon walls up towards Mount Lemmon in the Santa Catalinas, we see that these rock layers are dipped almost circularly as well. So the Santa Catalinas are a textbook example of a metamorphic core complex, and they're not the only one in the area. The Rincon Mountains, which I touched on a little bit, as well as the Pinaleños and the Dragoons are also examples of metamorphic core complexes that create Madrean Sky Islands. Our next type of mountain range here in the Madrean Sky Islands is a fault block mountain range, 
created by crustal extension in the fashion of Horst and Graben, where normal faults uplift mountains and downdrop valleys. So the Santa Rita Mountains are a great example of a fault block mountain range in the Madrean Sky Islands. The high point, Mount Wrightson, is composed of a sedimentary and volcanic unit that dates back 170 to 185 million years. The rock that forms the walls of Madera Canyon on the northwest side of the Santa Ritas is a 60 to 70 million year old granite. So that just shows you the lithological diversity of the Santa Ritas. Some other fault block ranges in the Madrean Sky Islands include the Babo Kivaris, which are mainly intrusive, and the Huachucas and Whetstones, which are mainly composed of 140 million year old limestone. Our last type of mountain range here in the Madrean Sky Islands is a volcano, which the Chiricahua Mountains are. The Chiricahua Mountains were formed 27 million years ago when the Chiricahua volcano erupted violently, forming a 12 mile wide caldera and eventually forming these gorgeous rhyolite rock pillars and hoodoos that Chiricahua National Monument is so famous for. These rhyolite rock pillars were formed by rhyolite tuff fissuring and eroding over time, generating these awe-inspiring hoodoos that are well worth a visit in Chiricahua National Monument. The Madrean Sky Islands have a very similar geologic history to the rest of the basin and range. The key difference here is that the faults and the volcanoes here are no longer active, whereas in the more western part of the basin and range, such as western Nevada and eastern California, they still are. So that's the general geology of the Madrean Sky Islands. Well, that about does it for the information portion of the Madrean Sky Islands. Be sure to keep it locked because in my next video, we're going to explore five places around Tucson where you can see and experience the wonders of the Madrean Sky Islands for yourself. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and keep it locked to Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!